Bonjour. All right, um, thanks for all coming here today, and um, uh, we really appreciate it. Um, so, like the, uh, the film, uh, just a little taste of what we've been up to for the last, uh, I guess, six months or something. Um, we're really excited um, with this record that we've made, and I um, um, think you're really going to like it too. So. Um, yeah, we're thrilled to be here today and to uh, announce what's going to be uh, a big tour and um, starting next year in the spring. And um, it's it's great, of course, for uh, to be here and have a lot of our fans as well show up for us. Thank you. It really means a lot to us. Thanks very much for showing up today uh, to support us. Um, Let's see, I've got some notes here. Um, the memory's not so good. Um, so, we want to thank as well um, Jackie and uh, Angelo. Um, thank you. Our incredible French promoters. Where are you? Yes, over here. Thank you for being here and organising all this. Of course, a, a big thanks as well to Alan and Jessica for putting this together for us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and of course, our dear friend and German partner, Marek. Take a, take a bow, Marek. Um, um, Andrew and Sean, and not forgetting, last but not least, Mr. Kessler, the Baron, and his partner, Alex, from somewhere as well. Keeps him in a little box somewhere. There he is, Alex. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks. I'm just going to pass you over to Marek now. Thank you so much and uh, welcome everybody here at the Gate Lyric and welcome to the fans, the media and especially millions of people in the, web, uh, in the web now watching this press conference. We're delighted to have you all here. These are exciting times. The wait is over. Depeche Mode will be embarking on their European tour, which are mostly going to be stadiums kicking it off at uh, Tel Aviv Hayakon Park on May 7th and um, finishing it in Minsk on the 29th of July. And in between, there'll be lots of European um, stadium dates. There'll be Moscow. There'll be, of course, Paris, Stade de France, but you'll see the dates scrolling down later. I don't want to hold the fans up any longer and the media neither. Let's kick off this press conference and please raise your hand if you have any questions, and I see the first hands up uh, already, and I'll point out to the lovely lady in row two, and she has the qu first question. Thank you. Well, the first question is about the first show. Why did you decide to open in Israel? Well, we, we, it goes back a couple of tours when we had to cancel an Israeli gig, and we felt so bad. And we started the last tour in Israel, and it was... Uh, it's a great place to start and spend a few days before the tour um, actually starts proper. So uh, we thought we'd do the same thing again. Please, question here. Uh, hello, my name is Yegor Rakhimovich, newspaper Diana, Riga, Latvia. I have a question. You've been together for 20, uh, 32 years right now. Maybe each of you can uh, tell a couple of words how the relationship within the band have changed over the years and how these changes influence your music and in particular this album so those relationships and influence That's, we're not supposed music. to have difficult questions <laughs> it's very complicated <laughs> no simple answers to my that. favorite color is blue <laughs> But that hasn't changed, though. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think um, we're obviously a lot older. Nobody laughed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that much older. <laughs> and I don't know. I think we, you know, I think we know each other's strengths and weaknesses now, and we we uh, get on quite well. I 
that, that changes as well slightly because obviously Dave started writing songs a couple of albums ago and that's a, a, a welcome addition to the, the, the stress that I usually have for writing all the songs for an album. And Dave's written more than ever this time. Um, and um, yeah, there will be, what, five, five and a half um, lyrics that Dave's written, not necessarily on the album, but on the, uh, the whole project that we're going to be putting out. And yeah, it was, I mean, we, you know, we work really well together. You know, as Martin said, you know, we, I think we play to our strengths. And, um, you know, I think over the years, you, just, you know, there's been lots of ups and downs. I mean, we've all been well sort of documented, but, you know, if you're in any relationship with anybody for 32 years, um, there's going to be those, you know, ups and downs. Um, but, you know, I think the strength has always come from the music and it's always come from the performances. It comes from our fans who, comes, who listen to our music and have stayed loyal to us and grown with us. You know, um, we can't really ask for more than that. You know, to still be making music after, you know, um, pretty much you know, more than half our lives, you know, Martin, we were talking the other day in the studio, and Martin pointed out that, you know, he's been writing songs for 40 years, you know, um, and, you know, I mean, the songs that, some of the songs that we actually even recorded, you know, um, he wrote, you know, 40 years ago, so it's pretty incredible to still be able to do that, do what you love and doing. he's still only 31. <laughs> incredible. That's a really incredible thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next question here. Hello, I'm uh, Patrick from Paris. Uh, do you have some uh, already idea if you will add some uh, warm-up tour like you did, you did a few years ago in Luxembourg? And uh, do you have some idea if you will add some uh, date in Paris, for example, or in London during the tour? We will, we will be doing a a warm-up date but we can't release the date details at the moment because we haven't decided where but uh, we will do a, a, warm, a smaller gig a warm-up gig my name is Zsuzsa Molnár and I'm from the Hungarian public radio here hi and I have a question to Dave it's amazing how you perform the songs and I guess it's a little bit easier when you are on stage because there is a huge crowd, there are reactions, but how can you do the same in the studio? Um, that's a good question. It's, it's, really, it's really different. It's really different. But I, I do, you know, over the years, I've sort of been able to like, um, I think like, uh, I kind of put myself on stage when I'm in the studio, if that makes any sense. You know? We usually cheer along. Oh, was that? Yeah, and, 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 and they applaud and stuff at the end. It's not quite as loud as some of the concerts, but, you know, they give me a lot of encouragement and I make, make it really comfortable in the studio. You know, I like to just sing live, really. I like to set up a mic and crank up the speakers and, and I kind of put myself... It's easy for me to imagine all the amazing uh, concerts that we've performed together, so... I, I kind of put the songs there. I even write from that place too as well, thinking about how, you know, it's a bigger picture out there. <laughs> Hello, Shana from M6. Uh, it's really good to see you bad boys, really, uh, it's really nice. Um, Dev, I have a question for you uh, regarding the writing process of the album. Did you write some songs on the album and can you tell us about them? He told them. I yeah, I, I did and um, Martin wrote a lot of a lot of songs too. In fact, between us, we probably had close to twenty songs that we recorded, um, and from that we'll choose the record. But um, you know, when we you know we demo songs, and then when we're in the studio together, we it's a process, and, it, and you know there's other people involved in that process as well. We're not producer, engineer. We had Chris Chris Berg who who joined us in the studio programming and playing as well. Um, so then it's, you know, uh, the songs can, can really change quite a bit. Um, I like that process. I like, the, I like it to sort of um, grow from something uh, that's quite small into, in, into what is, becomes a Depeche Mode track. It's, it's different. Yeah. 
Hello, my name is Anna Lajarevic. I'm from Serbia, Belgrade, Daily Newspaper Blitz. And I would like to ask you, uh, last time you were supposed to play in Belgrade, but you had to cancel. Is there a message for Serbian fans? What are you going to bring us this time? Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, hopefully that won't happen this time. Um, but uh, yeah, sometimes life uh, hands you things that you've got to deal with. So we played Belgrade, didn't we? Oh, did we? In the, oh, in the uh, end we did. In the, uh, yeah, but we didn't do the big concert. No, we did big we, stadium. No. We went back and we did play a concert, but yeah, um, yeah things happen, and um, you know you have to just roll with the punches. So um, we, you know, hopefully we'll be able to make up for it this time. Hi there. Um, this first row, <laughs> just in front of you, oh. right here. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Jana, I'm from Czech Republic. Congratulations to the opening video, it's amazing, really. Uh, it's full of joy and pure enthusiasm. Can you tell us more about uh, the recording new pieces? The recording, I think, is always you know, a joy, and I think we have a lot of fun. I, mean, I, I think we always have, but especially over the course of the last two or three albums, I think working with Ben Hillier and the people that he brings in is um, uh, just creates a great atmosphere and we get on very well and you know basically we have a laugh and we do the things that we love to do you know making music a, you know it's a miracle that we are still able to do it this long into our career and, and enjoy it and we're very humbled by that and we and we love to do it hi I'm here. My name is Zulal Kalkand and I'm from Istanbul. Uh, what's the most uh, positive change that's occurred in your songwriting process during making this album? Hmm. That is a, a difficult question. Um, I, for a long time now, I've been saying that um, you know, my songs are very positive. I always find that anyway. Yeah. Sorry? It's always what? I, that, people say that. I don't find them dark. <laughs> it's better out than in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, mean, I, I think there is a lot of positivity and um, if I, when I tr listen to the album and I try to relate it to anything else that we've done, it's very different but it's somehow it's got a, a bit of a feel of violator some of the songs and some some have a feel of songs of faith and devotion it's kind of a hybrid of those two to me um and i don't know if that's answering your question but it's stating some facts <laughs> that's all you're gonna get <laughs> One more question from Hungary, work for the biggest paper. You came, you came three times behind the Iron Curtain and five times after the political change, which is an absolute record as far as uh, um, a Western supergroup is concerned in Hungary. Uh, does this phenomenon also make you proud in any way? And did you experience anything like that anywhere else in the world? Uh, to be honest, uh, uh, when we decided to go behind the Iron Curtain, um, we knew we'd be losing money, uh, but we knew we had lots of fans there, and it was a real experience for us to go to Hungary for the first time, to Prague, to Poland, and I think it just shows you one of the reasons why in Eastern Europe, and even Russia, why we're still so popular. So we did take the time during those sort of darker days to go and do concerts. So it was, it was very rewarding. I mean, obviously at the time we had no idea that the, the political situation would change. You know, we didn't have a big agenda to like, get bigger there when, when the Iron Curtain fell. <laughs> we just went and played we going there at the time. Gigs, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was quite an experience though, because we, you know, we, we, I think we were quite shocked by the response that we got when we first went to uh, Behind the Iron Curtain and places where, where people were new of our music and 
had heard, heard our music, were, but in some places were even unable to uh, obtain the records at the time. Um, but we still had this underground following that would share records together and have sort of, you know, listening, private listening sessions. And so there was, you know, uh, people identified with what we were doing musically. Um, you know, and I think that's always been the truth behind the music is, is, is that, you know, it's, it is, it, you know, maybe some people do perceive it as being a bit darker or something, but it, you know, it's honest um, and it's it, full of emotion and melody. And I remember one funny story the first time we went to Budapest and uh, we were staying in the, I think the Hotel Intercontinental, we went to this restaurant at the back that had all these windows. And I remember all the fans, all in black, they all t were trying to watch us through the windows. And the whole restaurant, it was lunch, it became dark. <laughs> uh, because of all the Dinesh Mode fans around the whole restaurant. It was a big restaurant. It was, uh, they had to turn the lights on. Yeah. Hello, I'm here at the first row on your right. I'm Rudolf from France for Rock First magazine. My question is about, we, are, we just seen on the video, uh, you reach synthesizers and uh, you always been, uh, and you always are masters in the use of synthesizer. Uh, but today, a lot, a lot of bands use very well synthesizers. My question is, do you think you're still the best at this game? <laughs> yes, naturally. <laughs> Hi, Katerina. Belarus uh, internet company to buy. Hi, I'm, I'm here. Uh, you will finish the uh, European part of the tour in our country, in Belarus, in Minsk. Uh, what do you know about our country, about our city? I know Andy played a concert in uh, Minsk. Uh, did he tell you something about Belarus? And can you invite our, uh, your friends in Belarus uh, to your concert? I haven't actually talked to them yet. But but I will before we go there. But Do you know uh, something about it's Belarus? A, it's, it's a lovely place, yeah. <laughs> I think I saw them. about three hours of the of Minx. No, it was really good. And we always like to try and play these new places where we haven't played before. So that, that's great that we're coming. Thank you. And uh, we'd like to turn to our fans who have sent in questions uh, via the internet. Let's give them a chance too. So, Jonathan, if you could give the sign, thank you. Or whoever's in charge, thank you. Hi guys, my name is Hema. First of all, I want to thank you for this great opportunity you have given to us. My question is about touring. For me as a fan, watching your shows live is a great experience, but I suppose a whole tour must be quite exhausting for you, doing more or less the same things almost every night. What do you do to avoid routine while touring and seem like you are enjoying every single minute on a stage? Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye. So we just answer? <laughs> oh, <laughs> she's not coming back? She's willing. <laughs> um, we, we have to get filmed and then they have to upload it. <laughs> uh, yeah. A little JPEG. We'll send it back to her. Um, well, uh, um, look, the, your, uh, to answer your question, the performance on stage is really what it's all about and whatever gets you there. And these days, you know, it's very different to what it was 20 years ago, but, um, um, you know, the joy is in the performance, you know, you get the energy from the performance. And, you know, you, you mentioned that, that you see, you know, the enthusiasm on stage. It is really important to us. And I think we've grown as a band uh, from the way we perform as well. And that interaction with our fans. Um, it didn't just happen overnight. It is, I think it's something that developed for us um, over a great many years. But uh, to me, it's still the biggest, the biggest challenge and I get the most from it as well. You guys want to pitch in? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Sorry, didn't want to interrupt. No, it's fine. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, let's go to the next question. Hi guys, hello everybody. I'm Paolo from Sardinia. 
and this is my question. Uh, when you play live, Never Let Me Down Again, and you involve us to shake our hands, there was a fantastic moment. Uh, and I wonder what what is your reaction when you are on stage? You you can see us. What, what do you feel? Thank you very much. See you next time. It, it, it is an amazing sight, and you know I, I might be playing a synthesizer or something, but I sometimes I forget what I'm playing. You know, because see the crowd move like that. It's very emotional. Yeah, it never gets old. It's amazing just to see so many people doing that. I think the first time it happened as well was probably on the uh, music, music for the Masses tour, um, which was in 1987, yeah, 88, something like that. Um, and, um, Memory's not so good these days. Yeah, I mean, also the eyesight. So, but when that happens, we do, you can definitely, even if you can't see so far, it's a feeling, and it's a feeling of a lot of people doing the same thing at the same time and being united, and that's, there's no better feeling than that. You know, music, someone said last night when we were having dinner that music pulls us all together, and, and I think it, that it really does. There's a strength in it, and in those moments on stage, we definitely feel it. Remember that, Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talking about eye contact so, yeah. with the fans, <laughs> eye contact with the fans we have we want to now hand it over to some of the fans let's get two questions from the fans can i see your hands up whoever wants to ask a question there's a gentleman over there in the middle in the back with a little beard blue tush t-shirt he was the first one to raise the hand in the back yes in the back a little bit further would you go to the lady with the microphone it's your moment yes go ahead hello um, will all the shows again be recorded and uh, sold as a CD via your website? That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> um, we did that last time. Um, haven't decided if, if we're going to do it yet. Um, but maybe. Yeah. Did you like it? <laughs> Here you go. Bonjour. I'm Karine, French fan, old French fan. Uh, well, I'm trying in English. Uh, do you think that a show one day uh, could be possible with a classic formation, an orchestra like uh, just um, Metallica? Yes. Uh, it's definitely possible. We probably wouldn't do it though. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my name is uh, Gérard Bardavid. Uh, I work for Rolling Stone, France. Uh, two questions in one, sorry, but we've been talking about the tour, the album. This thing has no name yet? No. <laughs> We're working on it. We're trying it. We're trying to think about it. We've got too many things to do like this. Okay, and the second part of the question, because that was quick, was uh, you started some times ago, I won't remember you when, because it's long ago and far away, but you've seen that business change quite a lot. So I'm curious to know what's your vision of uh, the music business this day and the way you fit in. Uh, well, luckily, I think we never really, we've never really uh, fit in anywhere so um we're very lucky that we have a very loyal fan base um, because music industry in general is in a, a state and we're fortunate that we that we have a lot of people that are interested in what we still do yeah hi hi this is uh, xavier from basque public television uh, you are you have decided to repeat in Bilbao in your only visit to Spain. Uh, why? I mean, we're announcing um, our summer tour and our American tour. And beyond that, we haven't really decided what we're going to do. So, uh, um, but the place in Bilbao was a great success for us. So uh, we're going to go back there, and hopefully one day we'll we'll get to the rest of Spain. Hi, my name is Leticia Krupa from France 5. 
As you will uh, meet some French journalists, could you say which media, French media, do you know? You mean personally? <laughs> I try to avoid media in general. Uh, to be Why? Because um, uh, of things like this, like where you've got to talk to everybody and answer questions, probably not our favorite thing to do. Are we doing okay though? I don't know. Everybody, yeah? Okay. <laughs> I, I know Charlie Sabatier, who does Canal Plus. Charlie Sabatier? Yeah. Yeah? Yes, I know him as well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know him. In fact, we had dinner with him two nights ago. And he really, he really annoys us because he gets recognised more than us. Hello, gentlemen. I'm George from Depeche Mode um, A question for Martin and Dave and Probably, um, um, Andrew. Um, <laughs> to date, have you been able to write the track of your dreams? And if yes, which was it? Where are you? Ah. Sorry, could you ask the question again? I was distracted. <laughs> to date, have you been able to write uh, the track of your dreams? And if yes, which was it? Over the years, I mean, there's just so many songs, you know, that, that we've um, released and I don't know if I could really pick one and say is the, the ultimate song that I want to achieve. But I am very happy with the new album and I think there are at least like three or four songs that are up there with some of the best that we've ever done. I mean, I could say as well that there are, yeah, there's, there's a couple of songs that Martin's written on this record that for me to sing uh, as well, um, I definitely am, am most excited about. Uh, you know, one, like Martin said, one or two in particular, um, um, where, you know, the, occasionally that happens when you, you really feel moved by a song and no matter how many times you sing it or try and perform it, there's certain songs that do that for you. Um, it is quite rare too, I think, but because there's, there's special moments that you wait for. Um, it's, why, it's why you write. You're trying to get to that moment. And sometimes you touch on it and sometimes you don't. <laughs> Hi, I am Roy here. Yes, um, uh, I'm Roy from Paris. Uh, I want to know uh, why... Does everybody you know you in Paris? Yeah. Roy from Paris. <laughs> uh, I want to know why uh, did you choose Paris today and if it's possible to have a DVD for, uh, for the uh, next show in Paris? Why we chose Paris, we've always liked Paris. You know, we've recorded music here and it's always a great place for us. Bercy is one of our favourite venues in the world. We've the French audience has always been fantastic. Um, but regarding the live DVD, again, I mean, we've got so many things to think about. I mean, like I say, the name of the album, the name of that track you just heard, we don't know. You know? <laughs> uh, so the live DVD question is, is a bit further down the line, you know. Hi, I'm over here. My name is Andrew, I'm from Poland, I'm the Closer to put the Peshmal.pl. I have a question about your fans, because recently Polish fans uh, made a couple unofficial clips such as Shadows for the Masses, Lipta for the Masses, and we made an effort to give the DVD with them uh, to you personally. And uh, I wonder, if, uh, did you have a chance to watch it? And if, if so, uh, what did you feel, what did you think about it? And uh, uh, do you like this kind of uh, fans projects? So is that where they recreated the videos? The fans recreated the videos? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw it. I thought it was, yeah, it was very funny. It was, you know, they put a lot of effort into it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh...
<laughs> fans were coming sort of to the um, conclusion of this press conference shortly. We'd first like to go back uh, to the web once again. There's so many, really thousands of people who have put in questions, so we do want to give them the opportunity to ask two more. We'll then revert to the fans for one or two questions and ended up with two here. So six more, please. And thank you very much to Depeche Mode for sitting here and standing up to all those questions. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, guys. My name is Natasha. This is Agata. We are from Poland and we have a question for you. Do you have a concept for clothes that you're going to wear on the next tour? Um, is it going to be silver again, Martin? Well, see you on tour then. See you on tour, bye. Bye. I um, haven't thought about it at all. <laughs> Sorry to say, like Andy said, we have like so many things to think about. And it's great that we're announcing the tour today, but we're not actually starting till next May. So hopefully we will get a little break where we don't have to think about things and then we'll start thinking about things like that. I'm sure though that you all would be a big glittery, won't you? Gl glitter will be involved, <laughs> possibly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we literally, and we literally stopped recording a couple of days ago. Um, we're, we're in the studio on Friday and got on a plane Friday night to come here, and we've finished the album now. We've actually finished all the recording. And so oh, that's a big achievement. For yeah, us. and it's you know, like Martin said, and we've all said, we're we're really proud of the work, and we just wanted to. You know, come here and, and be lucky enough to announce this with all these people. And, you know, we still feel very fortunate that so many people are still interested in what we do, even before they've heard it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Julia. I'm from Ukraine. And I would like to ask you Has your idea of what a good concert is changed after these years? or? Do you still enjoy the same things about performing on stage? Thank you. Um, it, it, I mean, personally, it's changed a lot for me because I just used to be drunk all the time. <laughs> so, you know, for the last two and a half tours, I've actually really enjoyed them and I've actually felt, you know, what, what it's like to be on stage. But... Um, yeah, I think that we, we, we have much more of a bond on stage these days than we did um, early on. I think we, we relied a lot on stage sets. I mean, we went, I think the furthest we went was Songs of Faith and Devotion, where we had like 14 big boxes with screens and interaction going on. And I think we were like, we became sort of inconsequential. <laughs> so I think we've, you know, we, obviously we still like to use Anton and films, but, you know, there's still a, an element of performance that's really important too. Yeah. It's same, same for me. And um, it's, you know, it has changed. And, um, you know, Martin has definitely grown as a performer. But I think that is true what you said. Like, you know, um, I had some similar experience for a few years <laughs> as Martin. And, you know, it's... You put everything you can into a performance, but to be really feeling it and have nothing in w in the way of you and your audience, you know, um, it, it's really raw and, you know, very emotional. Um, to the point sometimes where, you know, like towards the end of tours, it's difficult to kind of say goodbye because you know it's coming to the end and you've you've kind of done this thing together. But yeah, it's performing is really an emotional thing. Thanks, Dave. Two more questions from the fan base, the gentleman over there. Short yeah. and sweet, please. Yeah. My name is Alf from Hamburg, Germany. Hi. Um, my question Hello. is, what do you think about the fan actions? Last year we got a big action in uh, Germany. So we put your f um, first single, Dreaming of Me, back into the charts. Have you heard something about it? And what do you think about it? Yeah, we, we heard about that, and yeah, we thought it was amazing that... Well, I, didn't that hear, I did hear about it. No, we didn't tell you. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, it, I mean, it's the, 
the uh, the what was it the thirtieth anniversary of it, and uh, yeah, it was amazing that you managed to do that. Okay, go. Hello, this is Ozan from Turkey. One question in respect to tour setup: Can we expect similar setup with Christian and Peter, or? Yeah, Christian, Christian and Peter will be on the road with us. Um, we haven't, regarding stage design, you know, that's really an early stage at the moment. Yeah. But we're hoping it's going to be a, another fantastic show. Anton, Anton Gorbin's in the process of yeah. working on that, kind of with us too at the moment. Yeah. Hello, my name is Isabel. Uh, this is my question. Hello, I'm here. Hello. Oh, hello. Here, just here. <laughs> um, after all these years, how can you still find inspiration for new songs? Um, I don't know. The inspiration for songs is a very strange process, I think. Um, you know, sometimes I think, you know, this sounds really uh, hippie-like, but sometimes I think you tap into the universe, man. <laughs> My name is Simone Wien in the front. Simone Wien from Deutschlandfunk in Germany, in Cologne. Um, you don't know still the name of your new album, but uh, do you know the release dates of the first single and the release date no. of the album? No. no. But do you know, do you still know the name of the label company? No. Oh, thank you. All, we, all uh, we can tell you is that Mr. Daniel Miller over here, who's sitting over here, yeah. is giving a round of applause. He's still with us, and um, we still rely on him a lot. <laughs> and on that Excellent. high, uh, I'd like to thank Andrew, I'd like to thank Dave, and I'd like to thank Martin. Thank you so much thank for you very much. three quarters of thank an hour you. of Depeche Mode. Thank you to the world, thank you to the web, thank you to the fan base, and we'll see you back on tour May 7th at Hyacon Park. Thank you.